गुड मॉर्निंग ओके आई थिंक आई कैन सी वृंदा एंड कीर्तना no i'm having confusion so you people are from second pu right no just for confirmation so i'll be handling basic concepts of chemistry first pu topic fine okay so i'll be talking about basic concepts of chemistry first pu topic so anyway yesterday i have introduced myself so once again if someone is was not there for yesterday's this one i can tell that myself dr raghavendra hegde katte okay so basically i am from north kendra so that gokarna sirsi so from that particular area i belongs to okay so for phd at cftr i came to mysore then i became mysore yan fine so that's where now since from 2002 i am in mysore okay so i'll be handling classes for you people even for mahajanas even for your rajas that is for not for pu that's for higher classes but if you find any difficulty please once again i will repeat if you find any difficulty while i am teaching no need to hesitate you are always welcome with your doubts or if you are not understanding any concept you can interrupt in between itself no need to hesitate i'll be seeing this chat box you can just send the message sir this one i have not understood can you repeat it or i have not understood then i will once again i will tell in a different way okay so no need to hesitate so don't leave the class with any doubts in your mind so try to get it clear okay so that is with related to myself now when it comes to basic concepts of chemistry in the name itself it is there it is like a fundamental topic for your chemistry subject it's like a basic fundamental topic so that means it should be important one because when i am constructing a house foundation has to be strong right so without strong foundation it will be difficult right whether all of you will agree with me anyone from kannada medium or all of you are comfortable with english no problem right if any one of you are not understanding any word let me know okay because some of you might have taken kannada in sslc so in puc it will be english so the way of your language of teaching will be english you may feel difficult in beginning in the beginning you will be finding difficulty in understanding the concept let me know if that is the case fine so that's why we have the basic concepts of chemistry with respect to the board exam with respect to the board exam from this particular topic you can expect maximum 5 marks i am talking about maximum one so maximum 5 marks you can expect in chemistry please remember complete 5 marks question will not be there it will be split it as 3 plus 2 or 4 plus 1 or 3 plus 1 plus 1 in any this type of thing they will be splitting the 5 marks question the complete 5 marks question will not be there it's not like physics okay so that's where we have the board per perspective <clears throat> this particular topic you can expect five marks okay now when it comes to competitive exams when it comes to competitive exam you can expect two questions okay so 
you can expect two questions i am not talking about the marks i am talking about number of questions you can expect maximum two questions okay that shows it's a quite important topic for board exam also and even for the competitive exam also that is related to weightage weightage of this particular topic with respect to your exam point of view but as i will be telling always to my students please don't go only for the marks yes in the life marks is very important no other way we have made our society like that marks are very important no doubt but at the same time if you have understood the concept properly if you are understanding the concept properly and if you are reading it for the knowledge point of view definitely you are going to fetch the marks no doubt so no need to worry so don't think that you are wasting your time in understanding a particular concept why not we can by heart it no don't ever do by hearting and all fine it's a very very bad practice if you understand the concept you can frame your own sentence but only thing is the overall meaning of that sentence should be proper one fine so all of you have understood now i will start with this particular topic so what i have told here is all this time i have discussed about weightage for this particular topic now anyway you people will be getting check sheet a material related to this topic from college so go through those check sheet whichever concept i will be teaching today go through those things in your check sheet also practice some of the questions if you have any doubts you can ask in next class that means tomorrow's class but if you are not understanding anything today while teaching you can clear it now itself today itself don't wait for tomorrow okay so now when it comes to basic concepts of chemistry first thing here is what do you mean by chemistry because in the yesterday's meeting also i was telling some of the topics if you are 100% with some of the topics you can become or you can master the chemistry with respect to p1 talking about you can enjoy the chemistry so those topic especially classification of elements atomic structure chemical bonding these three are the major one along with that this particular topic then we have the basic concepts of organic chemistry and hydrocarbons so these are some of the topics if you are if you have mastered these topics then really you are going to enjoy the chemistry as a subject fine otherwise what will happen my students always not only my to any students always they will enjoy watching movies rather than reading the textbook that's human behavior right but that's where we can have the interest in the subject when we are thorough with some of the concept okay so that's where when i'm talking about chemistry yesterday madam might have told already so when i'm talking about chemistry it is nothing but study about the matters it is nothing but study about the matters right so that's where we have the chemistry so what you can do is you can maintain one notebook okay so whenever i'll be teaching something you can just scribble in that notebook it's like a points if you go through that one you should be having recollecting whatever has been taught in the class you should recollect that one. that's how you should write okay so now i can tell chemistry is nothing but a branch of science or i can tell it's a science for the study about the matters right so that's where we have the chemistry now i have the word matters right study about everything we have understood now i'm talking about matters now in that case what are matters right so if you understand what you mean by matters then you can appreciate chemistry as a subject the definition of chemistry if you have don't have any idea about the matters 
then you will tell why what is that hell why we have to study about the matters right so that will be the question which will stuck to your mind so now when i'm talking about matters this can be anything which will have their own mass and volume this can be anything which will have mass and volume so that's where we can have the matters so which have mass and which will occupy particular volume that's where we have the matters that's where we have the matters right so what do you mean by matters why we are interested in matters because we are talking about chemistry so what do you mean by chemistry it is nothing but studying about the matters how they are going to interact with each other how they are going to present in the nature so that's where all those studies comes under chemistry now what do you mean by matters then so matters are nothing but which can be anything so which has its mass and volume so that's where we have the matters all of you have understood any doubt hmm? now when i am talking about mass now one other two words they are present here what do you mean by mass many people will tell mass is nothing but weight no absolutely wrong mass is not weight weight is different mass is different anyway we are going to discuss all those things when i am talking about the mass it is related to a number of matters or elements present in that particular thing that is nothing but mass roughly if i want to tell it is nothing but amount of elements present or amount of matters present that is nothing but mass a rough definition it's not a proper definition if i want to have proper definition i can tell that a mass is nothing but where a particular acceleration if i want to provide we have to apply the force say for example i am standing here i don't want to move myself so there will be someone who will be pushing me they will be applying the force now i will be moving a distance that's where acceleration has been done applied on me by applying the force so that is nothing but mass that amount of force that is nothing but mass which is required for a particular matters to have the acceleration that is nothing but mass right so naturally i am raghavendra sir my weight approximately it will be 65 kg i am telling truth only okay so don't feel oh you are telling less sir no no so approximately it is 65 kg only if someone wants to push me they have to apply some force if another person or if i take this particular marker pen right if i want to have push this one i want to provide the acceleration one finger is enough right so one finger you can see i am pushing this one some amount of force required is less but if anyone is using one finger to push me it's not possible because my mass is more so that's where mass is amount of elements present in that particular location or in that particular substance fine so that's where we have the mass all of you have understood if i want to have the proper definition so overall i can tell you okay, fine it is the amount of elements present in that particular substance fine so that's where we can have the mass now when i am talking about volume okay anyway si unit for mass is kg kilogram si unit for mass is kg kilogram that will be the si unit that will be the si unit for the mass which will be a constant for a particular substance say for example for raghavendra sir the mass will remain same 
whether I am on the earth, whether I am in Mysore, whether I am in Kashmir or whether I will go to the moon, there is no change in my mass. So that's where it is a constant. I can tell it is a constant for a particular substance. It cannot be variable. It is a constant measurement. Okay. So SI unit is nothing but kg, kilogram. Okay. Now, when I am talking about volume, when I am talking about volume, see for example, I have a cube, I have a cube, okay fine, I have a cube, so in this cube, I have filled the gas, anything, and which is properly seen, inside here, I have the gas. Now, if someone asks me, what is that amount of gas which is present inside the cube? What is that amount of gas which are present inside the cube? Then I should talk about the volume. Then I should talk about the volume because there is a length that is A. So there is a length that is A and there is a length that is A. So total how many things are there? 3. All are A because it is a cube. Where all the edge length it will be same. That is the speciality of a cube. Right? So cube is a structure where all the edge length will be same. Equal to each other. So therefore I have taken A, A, A. Fine? So if I want to define how many gaseous or gases are present inside this particular cube? Then I should tell that it is a cube. It is a cube because A into A into A. That's where three parameters are very much required to express the volume. Three parameters. One is length from here to here. Another one is length from here to here and another one is length from here to here. So, three parameters are compulsory. If I am talking about area, two parameters are enough. But when I am talking about volume, three parameters are required. That is this length, this length, this length. Right? So, length, width and height. So, all together we have the a cube. So that's where I have the length. I have the length. Right? So length, that is nothing but distance between two points. So this point and this point. What is that distance? That is length. This point and this point. That is length. So naturally, SI unit will be meter. That will be the SI unit. So, symbol is small m. SI unit will be meter. Symbol will be small m. Fine. So, don't get confused. So, what I was telling here is chemistry. I have defined the chemistry. Now, we know what you mean by chemistry. Next, what do you mean by matters? Because chemistry is nothing but related to the matters. So what do you mean by matters that we came to know, which have their own mass and volume. Now the question is, what do you mean by mass then? So mass is nothing but amount of elements present in that particular substance. That's where we have the mass, a rough definition. Now assignment for the mass will be kilogram, that is kg. Symbolically we can write it as kg. Now volume. Why we are worried about volume? Because matters will have their own definite volume. That's what we have written. So what I mean by volume? So volume is nothing but which requires three parameters to define the volume. Right? So that's where that will be length, width and height. Right? So that's where they will be having length. So what do you mean by length? That is nothing but meters. Expressed in terms of meters. SI unit will be meter. Symbolically small m. 
fine so anyway further we are going to discuss on this but for time being all of you have understood all these terminologies any doubt hmm? if you have any question you can upload you can type it there and you can upload it no problem we can have a discussion on that otherwise i will move to the next one see students since we are going with online class the major problem in online classes that is the one i can't see my students face otherwise anyone's face especially eyes are the one which will be talking which will talk reality right because in front of ragvendra sir if i ask all of you have understood people will tell yes but their eyes will tell whether they are, they are telling the real truth or it's a false statement they are giving right but here the problem here is i can't see any one of you so therefore if you have any doubt you can upload your question you can upload in the chat box which i can say here okay fine so otherwise i will move to the next okay so for that we will go with the types of matters for that we will go with the types of matters okay now very important point which i want to tell here is if you want to have a good marks in your competitive exams before going for competitive exam textbooks additional books you have to be thorough with your ncert textbook right and you can take the help of check sheet also so then only you can have the proper foundation okay so what do you mean by matters we have discussed because we have given the answer why we have to study about why chemistry that we got the answer right what are matters we have got the answer same way what are volume what is mass we have got the answer for all these things now we have to go for types of matters because in the nature we don't have a simple form we have types of matters right see for example if i take water h2o a simple an important molecule for all of us all of us right that is water now if i see the water it can be present in gaseous state right it can be present in the gaseous state in atmosphere it is present which we will call it as moisture right so that's where we have the gaseous condition of water anyway all of us will be drinking water because it will be liquid it will be present as liquid therefore we can drink the water right so now it can be solid that is nothing but ice that is nothing but ice so that's where i can see a matter which can have different forms all the matters in the nature they can attain all these three conditions which are called as states of matter which are called as states of matter so what i mean to tell you is which i am talking about states of matter where i can tell that matters can present in gaseous state in a liquid state and in solid state another fourth one is that that is called as plasma state anyway that's not required and it's not applicable for water because plasma state can be attained only at very very high temperature like in the core of the sun or outer layer of the sun corona we will call it as corona what what sir corona we are with covid corona virus that's yes the name of that virus is because its outer layer it mimics like the corona of the sun therefore it is called as corona virus okay so that's where we have the water which can be in solid state liquid state gaseous state but at extreme conditions there will be another state called as plasma state okay 
So anyway, we are not interested at this moment about plasma state. Okay. So that is related to states of matter. That is related to states of matter in which physical form these matters are present. That's where we have the states of matter, which can be in gaseous state, liquid state, or solid state. All of you have understood. That is related to states of matter. Anyway, we are going to discuss that one in detail. In one of the topic itself, in first few we have another topic which comes under physical chemistry. That is states of matter. We are going to discuss all those things, right? Now, when it comes to types of matter, we can have two types. We can have two types. One as pure form. One as pure form. and another one as mixtures or combinations right that's where we have the types of matters now if you go to the bakery shop you will ask that person that please give me mixtures right so what are mixtures if you observe those mixtures it will be combination of many things so therefore they are called as mixtures right so therefore a uh, matters can be in the nature as mixtures and pure form so that's where we have the types of matters in which form there is states of matter try to understand the question so matters if someone ask you in which form then we can have either gaseous form liquid form or solid form in which form that is related to pure form or mixture form so in which form matters are present both can be explained right but if i come back to here types of matters which can present in the nature as pure form or a mixture form right now since in the nature we have many matters which are present together so therefore there is more chance of presence of mixtures there is more chance of presence of mixtures say for example i have a water drinking water if i take a drinking water okay so whether i have taken it from pure it or aqua guard whatever it is i have a water do you really think it's a pure water no it's not a pure water Oh, students are getting up. Oh, sir, what you are telling? If it is not pure water, then would have got some disease condition, right? Now, when I am talking about water, a drinking water, it's not pure water. That is because I am not talking about microorganisms or some pathogens are present. No, I am talking about they will be having some of the minerals with them. They will be having minerals with them so what i mean by water water is nothing but h2o right if i have only h2o now i can tell it's a pure water but since there will be presence of minerals now i can tell that it is a drinking water now i can tell it as a drinking water right or potable they will tell na drinking water or potable water i can tell because it is mixed with the minerals which are essential for our body if it is mixed with bacteria and all then we will have cold or some other disease condition that is different story so that's where i have the drinking water which is an example for mixture which is an example for mixture same way i have a water which will be used for the batteries present in the motor vehicles these waters will be used for the batteries present in the motor vehicles or you will be using it for ups at your home it might be there na so that's where they will be using water 
Now this water is not a drinking water. This is a distilled water. This is a distilled water. It's not a drinking water. We cannot call drinking water. Add drinking water to that battery. No. It should be a distilled water. Why? Because in this minerals will not be there. They have separated the water from the minerals by using the process called as distillation. Therefore, it is called as distilled water. All of you have understood? So, what I mean to tell you is whatever drinking water is there, it is fit for drinking purpose. I cannot call them as a pure form of water. I can call it as a drinking water. Okay? Which is fit for the drinking purpose. Now, at the same time, I have the water which will be used for filling the batteries and all. Or even UPS batteries. They will be using this type of water which is not called as a drinking water. We cannot add aqua guard water to those batteries. No, it will get spoiled. So therefore, that will be distilled water. Why it is called as distilled water? Because here, minerals and water has been separated by the process called as distillation. So in this water, there is no minerals or salt. No minerals or no salt in this. It is pure H2O. It is only H2O. All of you have got the answer? Whether I am clear? Any doubts in this? So that's where I have the matter which can be a mixture or which can be of pure form. Any doubts in this? It can be mixture or a pure form. Fine. Now, when I am talking about the mixture, when I am talking about the mixture, mixtures can be of two types. Mixture can be of two types. One is homogeneous mixture and another one is heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. Okay, there are two types among the mixtures. Homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixtures. So now, homo. I am not talking about that homo. All of you have understood what I am telling. Okay, so here, homo. Genius. Homo means same. No difference. Right? So that's where we have the homogeneous mixture. So what do you mean by homogeneous mixture? Where all the components are uniformly mixed with each other. So what do you mean by homogeneous mixture? It is a uniform mixture. It is a uniform mixture. Or I can tell there will be elements, different elements which are combined in a uniform condition. They are called as homogeneous mixtures. If I take heterogeneous mixture, naturally it is opposite to the homogeneous. Where it will be in non-uniform condition. Components are non-uniformly distributed. Non-uniformly distributed. So now, so we are not understanding what you mean by this. A simple thing here is in day to day life you can observe. I am adding sugar to the water. Now I have sugar plus water. Right? So earlier it was like sugar. Earlier it was like water. Sorry. It is only water. Now I am adding sugar to it. Right? Now I am adding sugar to it. Now I have got the drinking water. Now I have got the drinking water plus sugar. Drinking water plus sugar. That means if I taste a spoon, teaspoonful of water from here, if I taste it, it will have sweet taste. It will be sweet in taste. If I take it from here, 
it will also be sweet in taste. Now you should tell me, any one of you, you should tell me whether the taste from here and the taste from here, it will be different or it will be same. Whether you got my question, I have a water, to that water I will be adding the sugar and I will mix it properly. So after some time, I will take a teaspoonful of water, sugar water from here and I will taste it. And I will take a teaspoonful of water from the bottom of the container and I will taste it. Okay. Stephen is telling, bottom will be very sweet. All of you will agree with that? No sir, it would be same. Okay, based on this I can tell Stephen, very rarely he will go to kitchen, I think so. Right? Same. Okay, it will be same. Very good. So, Stephen, it cannot be different because I told. In the beginning only I told you, you should mix it properly. Yes. If you have not mixed it properly in the beginning, some sugar crystals will be present at the bottom. It will be more sweeter in taste. Right? But I told you should mix it properly. In the beginning only I told. So therefore, please remember, when I have mixed it properly, when I have mixed it properly, all of you are correct, where it will be having same taste. Whichever part of the container I will take, it will be of same text. No difference in the state. Okay? So that's where there will be uniform distribution. Now listen to my word. There will be uniform distribution of sugar molecules in this water container. It will be uniformly distributed. Now, another question. I will keep this container for one day. Whether any sugar crystals will settle at the bottom. I will keep this container the whole day. Full day I will keep it at one corner of the kitchen or dining hall. Whether sugar crystals will be settling at the bottom. Any one of you. It is wrong or right. No need to worry. Whatever comes to your mind, you just type it. Don't think that what others will think about you if it is a wrong answer. No. Okay? Okay. All of you are telling no, sir. Yes. All of you are right. There is no question of settling of water crystals, sugar crystals at the bottom. Because we have uniformly distributed. We have mixed it properly. There is no question of settling of any sugar crystals at the bottom. All of you are right. Now, why Stephen here has become silent? Okay? Fine. So there is no question of settling of any sugar crystals at the bottom. No doubt. Yes, all of you are right. So that's where it is an example for homogeneous mixture. That's where it is an example for homogeneous mixture. Fine. So example is salt plus water or sugar plus water. They are all examples for homogeneous mixture. They are all the examples for homogeneous mixture. Fine. Now, I will come to another example. Water is that. Okay. So, I will add some soil particles to that water. I will add some soil particles to that water. That means I have got soil plus water. I have got soil plus water. Now, can any one of you tell me what will happen? I have got the water. To that I have added soil and I have mixed it properly. No doubt. I have mixed it for 5 minutes properly. Vigorously I have shaped. And I have kept it on the side. After one hour or after one day, what you can observe? Any soil particles will settle at the bottom. Whether it will settle at the bottom, yes or no, you can type. Whether soil particles will settle at the bottom? Yes, Lakshman. 
it does not mix yes absolutely correct answer whether soil particles will settle at the bottom yes all of you are right it will not dissolve if it will not dissolve then it means it should settle at the bottom right yes stefan yes you are right so all of you are right it will settle at the bottom right so that is the difference between this and this right so that means after some time i can see soil particles are more at the bottom they are not uniformly distributed so that is an example for heterogeneous mixture that is an example for heterogeneous mixture what my point now why they are called as mixtures they are called as mixtures because water is one matter and sugar is another matter they are mixed with each other soil is one matter water is one matter they are mixed with each other so that's for they are called as mixtures therefore they are called as mixtures but only thing here is they can be separated from each other they can be separated from each other these matters can be separated from each other right so what are mixtures they are combination of matters they are combination of matters which can be separated which can be separated by physical methods i will come to that what i mean by physical methods they can be separated by using physical methods that's where we have the mixtures all of you have understood we have discussed about mixture what i mean by mixtures mixtures are nothing but combination of matters different matters with each other that's why we have the mixtures please remember i am using the word different matters i am not simply telling matters with each other i am specifying different matters with each other then only they can call it as a mixture now when i am talking about mixtures whatever the matters are combined together it can be separated by using some of the techniques physical techniques now if you recollect just now distilled water i told right if you recollect i spoke about distilled water how this distilled water we have got by separating the minerals and water from each other that's what i told right so that process is called as distillation i'll not go in detail distillation you are going to discuss in your basic concepts of organic chemistry but for time being you can remember that distillation is one of the technique where two components can be separated from each other that's what we can see or oh, as i told since gokarna sirsi that belt i belongs to if you have visited any one of you have visited gokarna and all many of you people will, might have visited because of your parents force i don't know because gokarna is meant for punyakshetra temples right so now while visiting to that particular place on the way we have a place called as sane katta that's place name so there they used to prepare the salt regular table salt which will be brown in color not like white salt so that is because how they will prepare that one is they will take the sea water and they will put it in one of the place where it will be collected and it will be kept and it will be exposed to the sunlight now due to that what will happen due to the sunlight water content will get evaporated and salt will remain on that floor as it is so that's where now sea water all of us we know sea water is enriched with nacl it is enriched with many of the minerals now what they have done those minerals and nacl they have separated it from the water just by evaporation just by 
evaporation. That's where a mixture has been separated, component has been separated. All of you have understood? So that's why we have the mixtures. Fine? Any doubt? Hmm? Any doubt? Okay? Now, when I am talking about pure form, if you have any doubt, you can type the message. No need to hesitate. So now, when I am talking about pure form, pure form of the matter, now once again we can have the two types. Once again we can have the two types. Okay? So one we can call it as elements. And another one we can call it as a compound. Another one we can call it as a compound. That's where we have the two categories. Once again, in pure form of the matrix. One as elements and another one as compound. Fine? Now when I am talking about elements, it can be atoms. It can be atoms or it can be a molecule. It can be a molecule. A pure form in that element is one category which can be atoms or molecules. Now, if I see, once again I have got the terminologies like elements, atoms, molecules, right? Now, all of us, we know in high school only people have studied about periodic classification of elements, periodic table. So don't worry, I am not going into so much detail. For example, if someone asks you, write the formula for hydrogen atom or represent the hydrogen atom on the board. Now we will write it as H. All of you will agree? Represent the oxygen atom on the board. Then I will mention it as O. Represent the iron atom on the board. Then I will represent it as Fe. Alright? So these are the symbolic representation of those atoms. Whenever I have written H, I am talking about hydrogen atom. Right? So whenever I am talking about O, that means I am talking about oxygen atom. Whenever I am talking about Fe, I am talking about iron atom. Right? All of you will agree? Now, that's where we have the element of hydrogen element of oxygen, element of iron. Right? Because we have only hydrogen atom. We have only oxygen atom. We have only iron atom. So we are talking about the atoms, pure form. So that's where elements. Fine? Now, if I ask you people to represent hydrogen gas, if I ask the people to represent the hydrogen gas, because in the nature, hydrogen is not present as an atom. It is present as a molecule. In the nature, hydrogen is not present as an atom. It is present as a molecule. If someone asks you to write the hydrogen gas, so Stephen, it's not H+, plus, but whatever, Bharat, you have written, it's absolutely correct. Make a point here. If I am writing H2, I am talking about hydrogen gas. H plus, we can call it as a proton. We can call it as a proton. Anyway, I will not go in detail. Yes, Stephen, it will be H2. Okay? So that's where hydrogen gas. If someone asks you to represent the Oxygen. Okay, sir, this is Jan. Sorry, Appa. I think your mother's phone, I think it is. Therefore, it's showing as Bharati. But please excuse me. I'm very sorry. I have some problem in my brain. I'm openly accepting this. And all the students, where I have taken the class, I'll be telling this one. 
in remembering the names i am very poor but if i see the face i will remember whatever after 10 15 years not much changes in your physical condition then i can easily recognize but names i am very poor why i am telling this one because now today you told right so this is jayant but tomorrow once again i may tell bharati only because that name will be displayed that time you should not feel bad okay so that's why now only i am accepting therefore always i'll be telling if any doubt you can call me but when you give me a call plus first you should tell you are so and so from this college i'll get confused otherwise okay so that is problem from my side part okay so that's where i have the hydrogen gas h2 hydrogen gas symbolic representation is h2 if someone ask you oxygen sir we require oxygen respiration oxygen will be inhaled that's what in biology people are going to study and you have studied in your high school so how to represent the oxygen oxygen is inhaled that means there is not oxygen atom it should be oxygen molecule that is o2 that is nothing but oxygen gas that is nothing but oxygen gas right my window or at your home the windows will be having grills right iron rod it will be made up of iron rod do you think that iron rod is made up of only one iron atom impossible iron rod will be made up of millions we don't know how much exact number millions number of iron atoms so therefore even it can be an example iron rod where pure iron rod if i take where iron will be present in n numbers right if i take sodium metal if i take a sodium metal a soft metal no doubt combustible also if i take a sodium metal do you think it is made up of one sodium no it would be made up of n number of sodium atoms right so what i mean to tell you is elements pure form of matter elements can be atoms or a molecule all of you have understood and whatever example i have given they are all examples for molecules whatever examples are there this one this one this one or this one they are all example for molecules whatever i have written here they are all example for atoms different atoms of elements okay so that's where we have the pure form in that way uh, if you don't have any doubt this one can i remove this because i require some space can i remove this hmm so if you don't have any doubts so i will remove this one now if i take don't worry another 5 minutes maximum my class will be done okay now if i take molecule now i can see i have the word atoms all of you know atoms are those where they will be having nucleus electrons at a nucleus will be present in the center and electrons will be revolving around the nucleus that will be done that is for atoms and each element will have their own atoms for example hydrogen element will have hydrogen atom oxygen will have oxygen atom that's where that is atom what do you mean by molecule what do you mean by molecule now i can tell that molecules are those matters molecules are those pure form of matters made up of more than one same element made up of more than one same element so they will be made up of more than one same element or i can specify 
more than one same atoms of element. Fine? So that's why we have the molecule. So example, oxygen gas, because oxygen, oxygen, same atoms. Hydrogen gas, hydrogen and hydrogen atoms, same atoms. So all these are examples for the molecules. Right? So what is that difference between atom and a molecule? Atom will be related to one single atom. Right? But molecule more than one atom combined together. They are called as molecules. Any doubt? Any doubt in this? That's why we have the molecule. Any? Anyway, I'll stop here because I know many of you might be seeing the clock, wall clock or wrist watch. You might be seeing now. So I will stop here. Tomorrow we are going to discuss about the compounds. So while coming tomorrow, please go through whatever I have taught that is related to mixtures, elements, all those definition matters. Go through all those things and tomorrow we are going to continue with the compounds. Fine? Any doubt? Any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can ask. No need to hesitate. Okay? Okay, Agnesh. Yes, yes, Lakshman. Thank you. Thank you, Pa. So, if you don't have any doubt, I'll stop the video. So, take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Nakul. In that case, I will stop here. Fine.